Another brick fan here with a collectible minifigure series. This is the series from the Lego Movie 2. This is set 71023 and was released in February 2019. Each minifigure comes in a blind bag that costs about $4 each, which means an entire set would cost you about $80 if you were to guess correctly when you were going through the bags. This set comes with a white bases. Most of the other sets come with black base plates, although the Batman series had printed base plates and there was an orange base plate in series 18. Some of my favorite figures in this series are Sherry Scratch and Post, which is one of the Apocalypseburg version of Sherry who had all the cats in the Lego Movie 1. I think that looks really, really good. I like the look of Flashback Lucy when she was a pop star and before her dark days. I think that one looks really good. Rex, of course, is very nice and I like the baby raptor that comes with him. And once again, from the Apocalypseburg collection, I really like Apocalypseburg Abe there right next to Rex. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at each of these minifigures. First up, we have Emmett and Battle Ready Lucy. Emmett is still wearing his construction outfit. So the orange safety overalls, vest, and the reflective tape all over there. He's wearing headphones now, so that's a nice dual molded hair piece. Has a nice white coffee cup. And then if you turn this just slightly, you'll see that he's got an MP3 player. There's his MP3 player playing his awesome mix. Battle Ready Lucy has a new cowl piece, a hood with the integrated goggles that she's wearing. She has a nice black torso with a bunch of printing on that in the light blue and kind of pinkish purple color which both look really good it's hard to see her face here but she has kind of a grimace on her face she looks a little bit angry or brooding here she does have dual molded legs so they have the brown on top here and the black on the bottom and a little bit of printing right here on her toe Moving around the figures, you see that Lucy's got some printing on her wrists there. And you can see she's also wearing a quiver of arrows on her back. They both have alternate expressions, so Emmett is still happy here. And this is the happier Lucy. See a little bit of the printing here behind the quiver of arrows, which is the same as the front with that blue and pinkish purple, just like on her arm here, as you see. Good figures of our two main characters. Next up, we have Apocalypse Benny and Giraffe Guy. Apocalypse Benny comes with this great space branded toolbox which is a really fantastic piece and of course he has his slightly broken helmet and a new robotic arm our giraffe guy is printed very nicely in this pale yellow and then the orange spots which i think look really good he has the dual molded legs with the dark brown on the bottom carrying a small flower piece there Benny, of course, has got a huge smile on his face. He's still the happy-go-lucky Benny he always was, even though he is in Apocalypseburg. You see that giraffe guy has the nice printing of the giraffe pattern on his arms and legs, which looks great. Benny has his air tanks on his back. Continuation of this nice printing. This headpiece is fantastic with this, this nice brown stripe, maybe representing the mane on the back of the giraffe the little dark here on the little protrusion is on the top of his head here it look really good you see that benny's robotic arm just has this normal robot clip piece in there and this other molded robotic piece here also looks really good they do both have alternate faces so there's benny looking a little grouchy and a little smirk on our giraffe guy 
Let's go ahead and move on to our next two figures. Next up we have Crayon Girl and Sherry Scratch and Post. Sherry also comes with Scarfield. So here is Scarfield, which is the pretty standard cat mold, although he does have a red mohawk and a red spiked collar. Good printing on the front of Scarfield here with a little different colored chest he hair here, and then a nice face with what almost looks like a tattoo here on his cheek. Very nicely done little cat piece. You see our crayon girl has a little crayon drawing there with her, a little smile on her face and a nice crayon piece in that purple color. I really like Sherry's scratch and post. I think her Apocalypse Berg version is really cool. If you look very closely, she has a cat as the belt here. She has a grouchy look on her face with the headband and glasses, which I think looks really good. Moving around the figures, you see she has some armbands or something on here with, with like spikes and stuff printing down the side of the leg, which looks very good as well. The backs of the figures, the crayon girl is very plain, although she has now this nice alternate face. No alternate face for Sherry, but she does have this good printing on her back, which is covered up by her hair usually. And moving back around you see she has the same printing on her arms and legs there on the side. And this again this headband I thought was really good. It's printed on the top of her headpiece. Next up is Hula Lula who's wearing a nice grass skirt here. She has a microphone and a record, which I think is a good looking piece. Just a black rounded tile with some nice printing on it. Her hair piece is also good in that nice light green with a pink swirl on the front. The watermelon dude has a wonderful watermelon piece here. Covers him up. I like the dual molded legs with the three colors. So he has kind of the same watermelon pink color at the bottom, the white pants with the green accents on him. He also has a quarter round tile that is printed up as a watermelon that you see there, wearing his cool shades with a nice grin on his face. Moving around the figures, you see that watermelon guy is wearing that short sleeve shirt. So he has the green printing on the top of his arm there. Lula is here you get a better look at that hair piece with the nice green hair and that pink accent. Hula's Hawaiian shirt, you can see she's wearing a lei around her neck here. Here is her alternate face. And our watermelon guy also has an alternate face without the sunglasses, still a big smile on his face. See how the skirt on Hula is shorter on one side than the other. She does have some green printing around her feet. Adds some character to her. Two very good figures. Here is Flashback Lucy and Swamp Creature. We, didn't, we haven't seen a ton of backstory for Lucy, but obviously she was a pop singer at some point, and here she is in her pop outfit. Same kind of microphone as we saw with Hula Lula, but she also has this gold record, which is Everything is Awesome. So apparently Lucy was the source of the song that she claims to hate from the first movie. Nice dark blue costume here with a lot of little bubbles. She has dual molded legs, so they're kind of a pink on the bottom. She's back to her original hair, which is the She's back to her original hair, which is the light blue with the purple highlights or purple stripes in it. Swamp Creature has a whip piece. And then also dual molded legs with the brown and the green. Some nice printing here with some silver accents and a belt. I like the printing on the torso there with a light 
with the blue printing on there and the suspenders, I think look really good. The headpiece is very nice. We'll move around him so you can see. You notice that Lucy's got the one blue arm printed here, printing along the side of her leg. No printing on the side of the swamp thing, but you do see the nice dual molding on his legs. And the more detail with the big ears that stick out from the headpiece that he has. The back continues his suspenders and then some extra little detailing there. Here's Lucy. It looks like she's singing. I like how the hair covers one of her eyes. No alternate face on the swamp creature, but there is a little bit of scaling there on the back of his head. Taking the headpiece off, you get a better look at that nice printing with the great big eyes for the swamp creature. Next up is Candy Wrapper, which is probably my favorite name for one of the characters in this series. And then Gone Golfing President Business with his nice silver golf club. I love the checkered pattern here on his sweater. He's got, looks like a white polo shirt underneath that. The nice striped pants down here, a good belt print, dual molded legs. So he's got the green Large green shoes, it looks like. Candy Wrapper is holding on to a cassette tape that is done here on a clear one by two tile, which is a very nice accessory. So another pop singer, perhaps a member of the group that Flashback Lucy was involved in. She has a nice pink and white striped halter top, it looks like. This nice Skirt piece goes around, dual molded legs as well, with the white on top down to this pink boots. There's some orange striping down here just above her feet as well. You see President Business has one white hand, which must be his golf glove, his signature hair piece as well. On the side, you see this nice star printed in silver in candy wrapper's hair. The President Business has some good printing along the sides of his legs here as well. Nice continuation of the diamond pattern checkered sweater here. The little graying at the bottom of his hair here on President Business. It's an alternate face for candy wrapper and for President Business. Sides are pretty much the same on both sides with a continuation of the printing. So good printing on all three sides of President Business's legs. Next up, we have Apocalypseburg Abe, who looks really good in this kind of steampunk top hat with the goggles on it. That full beard and that angry expression on his face. He has a minifigure printed on his t-shirt there. Good printing that goes down his legs with that red sash you see on his right side. He's next to Vest Friend Rex. Rex has the combination hat and hair mold, which I think looks really good. You look closely, you can see a couple of pockets printed right here on top of the hat, which I think looks nice. The brown printing goes really well with that dark blue. He's wearing some chaps, it looks like, here on his legs. So boots here on the bottom, and then you can see some of the chaps and then the blue showing through underneath there. He's got his R for Rex Danger Vest right here on his torso. As we move around the figures, you see Abe's carrying that axe. He also has some wristbands that he's wearing as well as Rex wearing wristbands. It's nice to see that little gap here between the hair and the beard to show off kind of some sideburns on Abe. We have, again, a Rex symbol back here, and then the striping on the back of his vest. I like the crossed axes and the top hat here on the back of Abe. Both have alternate expressions, so there's Abe, alternate expression, and Rex has this more devious look on his face, which are both good alternate expressions. 
sides are the same. I maybe didn't point out this nice little printing here along the side of Rex's leg as well. So some brown legs with some good blue printing and then another belt there along his waist, which also looks good. Next up we have Kitty Pop with this really cool guitar in white with the pink stripes. Got some nice little kitty ears there in her hair in that nice light blue or aqua blue color. That match the pants that she's wearing. We also have Unikitty here, which looks like the Unikitty look from you know, just kind of her base look. The blue unicorn horn there, blue on her tail, and then a little few color accents. She has a nice great big eyes and a smile on her face here. If we get this guitar out of the way on Kitty Pop, you see that she has kind of a patterning here and this what looks kind of like a fur chest of a cat. Dual molded legs with this nice light aqua down on the bottom. As we move around, you see that Kitty Pop has some printing on the sides with a little more of that patterning that we were talking about. She does have a white tail here, which I think looks good. She has an alternate expression where she's either singing or grinning very, has a big grin on her face. And then the continuation of that, that patterning here on her back. The back side of Unikitty is pretty plain, which is pretty normal for these Unikitty pieces. It's interesting to note that this Unikitty uses it just a stud piece instead of that newer rounded piece with a stud on it. So her head is not on there as stable as it is with some of the other Unikitties that I've seen. But it's still a good looking figure. This series has four minifigures from The Wizard of Oz. So we have Dorothy and the Cowardly Lion here. Dorothy has this good dress she's wearing with a cloth piece that goes around as a skirt. Some blue legs with the nice printing around her ruby shoes here on the bottom. Nice hair piece with the blue bows and a pretty smile on her face here. Our Cowardly Lion is carrying a badge of courage printed on this 1x2 clear tile, much like, the, much like the cassette we got with Candy Wrapper. Moving around the figures, you see some claws down here for the Cowardly Lion, this nice mane piece with the ears. Of course, that ruby red slipper printing goes around Dorothy here. And then we have a nice tail piece for the Cowardly Lion. Each has an alternate expression, so Dorothy is looking a little more concerned here, and the lion doesn't look quite as happy in this one. Our last two figures are, once again, from The Wizard of Oz. This is the Scarecrow. He is holding his Certificate of Achievement, because he got his brain, our... Tin Man with this wonderful silver bow tie here. Here, It's a nice little heart piece with a printed clock on it. He, of course, has his axe, his very nice oil can headpiece. I like the printing on the Scarecrow. I think this dark green and the brown go really well together. The matching of that rope belt works very good. Of course, all the patchwork on him. I like the hat that he's wearing as well. Tin Man is all silver with some black printing for the different accents like his buttons and things. You see he has a little bit of detailing here on his arm, printing down his leg, which I think looks very good. Moving around the back, once again the Tin Man is pretty plain, no alternate face on him. Our Scarecrow does not have an alternate face either. But good printing here with a little bit of stuffing coming out and some extra, the continuation of his belt around here as well. Once again, another rivet here on his 
on the Tin Man's elbow and down his legs there. Good printing on the Tin Man's face here, and again, I really like that bow tie piece. So there's all 20 minifigures. Let's go back and I'll wrap up my thoughts on the set. As I said in the opening, I think this is a really good series. I like the Lego movie too, and, and a lot of the characters you see here were highlighted. Of course, President Business didn't have a really big part, but I do like the look of him in his golf outfit here. As I pointed out, I'm a big fan of Benny. I like to see Benny in his joyful self, even though he has a robotic arm here in this one. And as I pointed out in the introduction, some of these Apocalypse Bird versions of these characters are my favorites. I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts on this collectible minifigure series. I'm going to get started on my next video. Until then, happy building. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to see more of my content. I've left a link up here on the screen to my other videos on collectible minifigures. Thank you.